So I grew up in Southern California, and between all the smog and the city lights, never really got to see the stars, stars like this. That is until I went to space camp in sixth grade, and it's quite a long time ago at this point. Um, but I distinctly remember how I felt at the time about how small I felt, but even more than that, how much there was to explore. And that really carried over when I started with Chick-fil-A. Uh, I've been with Chick-fil-A about four years now, and we sell chicken. We sell lots of chicken. Um, but I was the first GIS hire for the company. And the way I felt about looking at the stars for the first time is how I felt about GIS at Chick-fil-A. Enormous potential, enormous potential to explore, and enormous potential to do a lot of good with GIS. So I sit in strategy analytics. Um, you can think of it as market research or the research arm of uh, real estate. And at the time when it started four years ago, uh, we were nine people, including myself. I was really just supporting one functional group. And you can think of this as nine GIS users. And what I want to talk to you about today is the GIS journey at Chick-fil-A and how we, we went from one functional group, nine people, to over 40 functional groups and several hundred users in the four years I've been with Chick-fil-A. So initially, when I started and I came on, why I was hired to be a GS analyst uh, was to enhance and improve and rebuild our sales forecasting GIS tools. And fairly quickly, we achieved that. Um, so what used to take 10 minutes to process, uh, we got that down to about two minutes. So we've increased the speed and processing to about five about five times. And along with some of that, we got to do uh, some interesting maps like you see here where I've gridded out the entire continental US uh, into 50 mile grids and kind of looked at where all the chicken competitors were. And basically this is symbolizing, uh, it's symbolized by the color of the competitor who's, who has the most stores within those 50 mile grids. That's great, but we wanted to do more. There's a lot more to do. Um, we knew there was a lot of value in the data we were generating and collecting within real estate, and we really wanted to share that with the rest of the organization. So that's when we brought in things like portal and server and layering on things like SDE to create a, a really great web map for people to share. So it was a really great viewer for a lot of people, and this is how we got a lot of people uh, looking at location aware data. Uh, the second piece was we really wanted to be mobile forward. And the reason for this is a, a vast majority of our workers, our employees at Chick-fil-A travel, either through site selection or consulting or marketing. So this is where using applications like uh, Collector and Explore became very useful. Great, but we still wanted to do more. There was a lot more to do. Uh, so now people are actually viewing data, interacting with it, and some people are actually collecting data and sharing that uh, seamlessly with the rest of the organization. But for me, what I really wanted to get to here uh, was create a, a custom web application. So we brought in a web app builder, and we started creating a lot of geospatial tools. Um, I think at this point, we have over three dozen GP tools that we've custom built. And what you're seeing here is our crown jewel product called uh, Pinpoint. And there's probably a dozen different uh, variations of applications going out to different users across the business. But what you're seeing here is that you can generate a report in about four clicks, and it'll run as quickly as five seconds. In the past, something like this would have taken a very seasoned GIS analyst uh, probably 30, 40 clicks in order to generate. What we've done here is effectively allow people to become more of GS analysts to leverage the science aware without really knowing it and making it really easy and simple for them to use. We do a lot of proof of concepts in house, and part of that is really trying to paint a picture of what's really possible with GIS and GIS technologies. And what, we're, what you're seeing here is we've actually created uh, routes to about 400 stores uh, from distribution centers to the stores, uh, leveraging Geo Event Processor. We wanted to really work on um, real-time updates and real-time notifications. What you see here 
is an email alert that just went out. And the parameters for that is based on uh, the truck trailer temperature. If the, the temperature of the truck gets too hot, we set up automated alerts that'll let you, that'll send out email alerts saying which truck or which route and what the temperature of that truck was. Now, this is just a proof of concept, but the real big thing for me here is about sending these automated alerts. You, I'm sure you're, all of you can think about places in, within the business where sending automated alerts based on specific geography comes in extremely handy. Great, but we still wanted to do more. There's a lot more we can do. Up until this point, we we're really looking at things that were really map focused. But there's a lot of data that doesn't need to be visualized completely within a map. Um, so we brought in products like Power BI from Microsoft. However, the map here is the Esri plugin for Power BI. And I'll explain a little bit about the data. Um, I grayed out some of the sensitive information, but this is an aggregation of about 4 billion point of sales transaction records that is right at your fingertips. You can look at every single POS item sold for the entire chain, any, by state, by DMA, all the way down to the actual individual store, by every single day, by every item for 2015 and 2016. What's interesting here is that, yes, we're loading up a lot of data in one go and giving, it, giving people really a lot of data to view and to slice through very quickly. However, data collected in the Esri system, like collector, will flow into this model. So we are leveraging two disparate systems with the same shared data source that update both as, it, as data is being collected. Finally, we want to do one final thing here where we want to get to. Really, within UC, you're going to hear a lot about the science of where. And what we really want to get to is more of data, true data analytics, uh, data science. And what's been great about products like ArcGIS Pro now is that there is the Python package manager that lets you install these Jupyter notebooks really quickly. In the past, installing this and getting things like ArcPy or our just um, Python APIs would have been very difficult and very time consuming. Now it's much easier. What you see here is uh, basically I did analysis of <clears throat> someone across the business have postulated that there was a correlation between grand opening sales in new markets to um, Google trend searches, so Google searches. So what we're doing here is looking at two places, the Manhattan DMA, the New York DMA, and the Las Vegas DMA. And I've highlighted the two peaks, I uh, circled in blue, that caps out at 100. And what I found was that almost exactly 30 days prior to the opening, uh, you see the peaks here. Uh, I can't go very much into this at this point, but what's, what the value here is that now you can leverage the science aware with true da data science platforms. So kind of going back of where we were and where we went was really starting with the desktop client, ArcMap, Thick Clients. Uh, really the bottleneck would have been, this would have been limited to people who are highly trained in, the G in GIS in general. Then we moved towards more mobile, so people can view the data uh, on the fly, out in the field, and they can make transactional edits to the system now that we're sharing data across uh, the entire organization. Then we started building custom geospatial tools for people to use. It made it really easy for them to consume uh, in various applications. Then we really want to move towards notifying people about the changes through email alerts and so forth. Then we knew that Esri is great and we do amazing things with maps, but there's other visualization tools that we need to leverage for different business use cases uh, that we were able to still leverage location of our data within other platforms. Finally, we're now able to leverage uh, the science aware and data science applications and analytics. What you're seeing here is a strip plot, and it's going to start playing very quickly. But the x-axis is the number of GIS users, and the y-axis is the executive committee uh, groups. And the red dot is my group, strategy analytics. And what you see very quickly is that within a few months, we have other user business functions that have a lot more users than my group. And what you see here is that we've had steady growth over time. 
And by about June of 2016, I got about 200 people onto uh, the GIS system. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't handle any more. Uh, 200 was too much. And we were very fortunate enough to hire a second GIS analyst. And it took about a few months to get set up to learn about what we're doing. And what you see in, in December is a big shift across as far as the number of users that we were able to add onto the system. Um, by the end of June of this year, I think we get up to 323 users. Unfortunately, this is actually not up to date. Um, I just checked the other day, and it turns out that we have just a few shy of 350 power users. And by power users, I mean people who are leveraging GIS, not just as a viewer, but running the analysis tools and, and doing the, uh, the analytics. Uh, we have 43 functional groups on the system now. Uh, within four years, we went from one functional group to 43, and we can boast an active user base about 80%. And by active users, I mean people who are, who are logging onto the system at least once a month. However, if you take that number to look at just people who've logged on to it within the last week, we're still hovering up about 70%. Um, as you can see in the bar chart, the, the red bar there is my group. And within the four years, we've close to doubled the number of users. We have 16 users. But it's pretty clear that we have a lot of other groups across the business who are leveraging GIS a lot more than us. But at the end of the day, it's really about making a difference to the people you work with. And this is why I wanted to bring up every single user of GIS at our organization. Um, and this wasn't one of those blanket give the tool to everybody and hope they'll figure it out. In order for people to have gotten onto the system, they had to go through a mandatory training of at least one hour. And we're at the point where the, the information and the tools we build are so valuable that they come back three, four, five times, and we're starting to build custom tools for a lot of these functional groups. As I was working through this presentation, I know we were moving really quickly, and we never really looked back because there was so much to do um, and so much I wanted to do. Um, and there were natural stones that were in our way to getting to this point. Um, part of that was people didn't even know what GIS was. And some people might not know what GIS is, but they know what we've done with the pinpoint application that we've developed. And I'll, I'll admit it, I've made some mistakes and I probably put stones in my own way. But at the end of the day, why we were able to continue doing this, to press forward was because we knew the value of GIS and what it could provide to, your, to the organization. I think everyone here, I've talked to many of you, and you've had challenges in pushing GIS in the organization. Um, but I want to encourage you to continue because you understand the tremendous value GIS provides and where it could be. So you'll hear a lot about, and you'll continue to hear about the science of where, but really I hope you can take the science of where and put it everywhere. Thank you.